Hey there friends, thanks for checking in. Today we're looking at a Springfield Armory SA-35. This is a copy of the original Browning High Power. Now the Browning High Power was discontinued in 2018. Now we see manufacturers like Springfield come out with the SA-35. Why is it called the SA-35? Well, the High Power was first named the P-35 SA, Springfield Armory 35. Makes sense. Let's roll through some of the specs and features with this handgun, then we'll compare it to the Browning High Power Mark III. It's a steel frame, 4.7 inch barrel, full size handgun with 15 round mags. I have a lot to say as to how it compares. It's very, very interesting. It has a Thumb safety right there in the same place that the Browning does. A little different hammer. We're going to talk about that. It has a matte blued slide throughout. And it very much mimics the high power. Black serrated rear sights. Pinned in front dot. Single action trigger pull that will operate without the magazine inserted in the pistol. Which is a bit different. But the single action trigger is pretty nice the reset is right there almost a full position it shot great at the range i was very pleasantly surprised because i wasn't sure what to expect it didn't take long at all you just sink that dot into those serrated black rear sights and it was very accurate and i was happy with it and it felt great so how does this differ from a browning high power mark three this by the way was discontinued in early of 2018 and this was released in early of 2022 so that's that's how it all worked out with the timelines discontinued and at one time this was selling for twelve hundred dollars it's gone up in price since they discontinued it believe it or not i don't know that anybody thought that manufacturers like springfield like fn who originally owned Browning, maybe still does, I'm not sure, and Gerson would make copies. Now, I, I checked out the FN, very expensive, $1,200, $1,300. This has an MSRP of $799. This Mark III was going for that amount. Now, the couple things about this, it ships with a this is a 10 round mag it also has a 13 round mag and that's where they got the name high power back in the day when by the way this was browning's last design he didn't make it all the way through life he died before this was finally realized but the the thought here was to get a double stack magazine which is considered high power additional rounds but they made a single action full size nine millimeter handgun it does have a magazine disconnect and with that we will see the single action trigger pull the pull is much heavier with the browning and i've always enjoyed it i've had it for a while the value of this has skyrocketed since the discontinuation in 2018 but then we have copies here and if this is anything like the cold python the originals will increase in value I have a Python and it, it shot up in value since Colt started producing them again. Very differently, by the way, Colt produced them. But these are very similar. If you look at just that profile right there, you'll see it's similar. This has a shine to it. This has a matte black. But let's start with the magazine. Springfield makes a 15 round magazine. I already talked about this being a 13, or a 10 and a 13 round mag this is a 10 round mag but i also have metgar metgar has been making these for years these mags will work with each other a metgar 15 round mag works just fine and it'll also work with the sa35 you notice that didn't drop freely that drops freely more modern gun the grips on the sa35 are actually more traditional high power than the polymer grips on the mark iii original high power this is kind of cool it's got those black lines in the wood checker grips that's actually more original than 
the polymer. But if we look at the thumb safety, we will see that this is on the left side of the pistol. With the original high power, it is ambidextrous. Also, Springfield made it a little wider. So they, they custom the SA-35 for some modern features. So it's, it's not ambidextrous, but it's a bit wider, easier to engage and disengage. If we look at the slide stop takedown pin, we'll see that they're similar. The, the style of the trigger is similar, and the overall barrel length is similar. If we look at the hammer, one of the problems, see this won't fire without the magazine, one of the issues people had with the high power, they said hammer bite, where that hammer would come down and bite the webbing of their hand. I have never had that happen, but several people have complained about it. So Springfield made a ring hammer, and some of the later high powers did that as well. So that's a, that's a difference with these two models anyways. We look at the slide serrations, very similar with each. We'll look at the business end, a little... A little different there. We can see the Springfield here has that outer casing with the, well, they both do. Springfield's a little more pronounced. And then the sights are different. Here we have lines with the browning and a front square. And with the Springfield, we have serrated black with a front dot. All right. The price is very different, but the most noticeable difference is this single action trigger. I'll go ahead and put the mag back in. Where's the Okay, it's in. The single action trigger is very heavy. There are aftermarket parts to lighten up the trigger. A lot of people complained about that, but the trigger is very heavy. It's close to nine pounds, if you would believe that. The Springfield trigger, and I don't need a mag in there, is closer to five and a half pounds. A couple times I measured it at five and a quarter pounds, reset almost to full position. No over travel. Nice looking. If we look at the four ends here, we'll see outside of the gloss, it is very similar. And the weight is, let's do a quick weight comparison. We have an unloaded SA35. It's weighing in at 31 7 8 ounces will round up to 32 even and then here we have the Browning high power mark 3 31 and 3 quarters ounces so you can see how close these are from the original and then the the copy with the SA35 both these pistols are disassembled look at the frame that is an incredible copy you would notice the difference if you didn't know this was the Springfield SA-35 and this was the Mark III. That is an incredible copy. We'll look at the slides. Same deal. It's identical. I guess that's what a copy is. They shouldn't be surprised. But, you know, it's kind of surprising how neat it looks. Here are the barrels. The same. Okay, Springfield a little more shiny. It's newer. The only thing I noticed that was different and it's not the guide rod, GI style guide rod. That looks the same, but the recoil spring on the Springfield a little bit longer. See that? And the springs are a little bit wider with the Mark III. And then the takedown lever slide stop is pretty identical with each other. So there is the review of the SA-35 as well as the comparison with the Browning High Power Mark III. I expected them to shoot similarly, but the heavier trigger with the Mark III wasn't as accurate for me as the lighter trigger, five and a quarter pounds with the SA-35. This, the last time I had it out at the range, I had some ejection issues. I was a bit concerned, but it fed, fired, and ejected everything just fine. So I was happy about that. No issue with the handgun. Must have been an ammo issue the last time I was out with it. But this this really worked well. And I'm, I'm very much pleased with it. I, I think they did a great job with the copy. And I look forward to more rounds and even comparisons. Maybe I'll do a range comparison with these two. I think that would be pretty cool. But I certainly enjoyed this. I hope you did too. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.